This is Forma's Adventure Touring Boot, the Terra Evo. Not to be confused with the Forma Adventure. The Forma Adventure is a road boot that says adventure that offers no off pavement protection. The Terra Evo is an adventure touring boot. Fit on this boot is going to be great if you have wider feet. Not that you need wide feet, but certainly if you have a wider foot, this is going to be a really good boot to take a look at. The toe box on this boot is broad and broader than average, and it's a leather boot. Uh, leather. Now, there does have a plastic puck that comes on the inside. It's not going to flex on this side, but you do have leather on the, on the outside edge of the boot, which is going to allow that toe and that boot to spread as you break that leather in. So even if it's tight when you first purchase it, there's room for it to expand where synthetic boots won't do that. Also, the inside of the boot here is leather. There's going to be more room for flex as that boot breaks in. And the instep on this is fairly flat. And I, I really like that. I don't like a boot that has a lot of arch inside. I'd rather put an insert in if I need that, but I prefer the flatter boot on the inside and this boot has that. So if you have a larger foot, definitely something to consider as far as uh, your feet go. On the upper part of the boot, there's a fairly open cavity here. It's kind of an oblong. It's not really a round. That allows more room if you have larger calves, larger feet, often come with larger calves. Uh, it's going to fit you or more likely to fit you in that scenario. If you have an average sized leg for your, your foot size, it's going to fit well. If you're very small in the calf, then you, know, you may find that this doesn't tighten down. Now, that's going to be really good for airflow. When you're riding, you're going to get air down inside the boot, it's going to be more comfortable, but it's going to be an issue for protection because to get maximum protection, that boot needs to be clamped down nice and tight up against the leg. The build quality of the boot is, is good. It's a, it's a nice high quality boot. The liners are well stitched. There's multiple layers of it. It is waterproof. Uh, it's got a waterproof layer in it. It's the dry spec or what do they call it? Dry Tex is their, their their brand of a breathable liner. I did take this to Iceland, did a lot of water crossings. It stayed dry there and it stayed dry elsewhere. I did not spend an entire season in the rain, but I've definitely put it through a lot of its, its paces in that. Looking at the protection level, I rate boots on four tiers, zero to three, zero meaning zero off-road protection. What I'm looking for is how will that bike or that boot protect us if we go down on our bike on pavement? And this boot with the amount of leather it has, it's a very thick high grade leather. It's got a thick liner on the inside. There's a lot of extra buckles in here. This boot's definitely going to offer good protection for abrasion if we happen to go down on pavement. As we move into the adventure touring boot category. We're going to look at midsole support. This boot definitely has good midsole support. We're looking at just this part here where you're going to be on the pegs. When we get off-road on the adventure bikes, we're going to end up standing and we stand for technical riding or challenging riding, but also just to get better airflow or often because when we stand up, we get a better vantage point of the road ahead of us. We can see things sooner so we're not being surprised. And this has good support through that middle. That can be a really hard thing to measure on a boot without using it, wearing it. Because even if you push down in a reverse direction, even a boot with poor midsole may not actually show. This one does. If you're not sure if your boot has good midsole support, if you have an urge or a desire to, to purchase large foot pegs or these big massive floorboard style foot pegs, then your boot does not have adequate midsole protection for you. And that might be a little different. If you're a very heavy rider, then you need a boot with much more. If you're a light rider, you may need less. Uh, this boot for the average rider uh, or average weight, this is gonna be really good. So we definitely give it a green light on that. Mid-calf rise is the next category and the last category in the adventure touring boot category. If we look at the BMW Venture Grip here, you know, this is about the standard height for a, an adventure touring boot. You'll see that the Forma Terra Evo exceeds that standard. It sits taller than that average height there. And so we definitely give it a, a check mark on that. Moving from the 
Adventure Touring Boot category into the Enduro Boot category. So I'll call this a Class 2 boot. The first thing we're going to look at is whether it has a toe box that will protect you on an impact. The Terra Evo, the former Terra Evo, does do that. What I'm looking for here is just that this cup, can I push it down? Does it compress if I hit a rock? As a comparison, if I look at the, the BMW, see I push that down just with my thumbs. As I get into things like the motocross boots, there is no flexibility whatsoever anywhere, what's, you know, anywhere on that boot. Uh, this one, it does have a little flex behind, but the toe box at the very front is solid. I would put this on the lighter end of the enduro category, but definitely exceeding the standard for the adventure touring boot. So that gets a, a, a nice green check mark there. Crush protection is the last and final category for the enduro boots. And crush, crush, what we're looking for is basically how much flex do I have left and right on the boot? And if I put push down on the boot, how much energy does it take to crush down on that ankle? If you look at something like the BMW boot, it's very soft. There's basically nothing there. The Tarot Evo does not reach into the enduro category, but it definitely exceeds the, the, the standard for what the, uh, the adventure touring boots generally have. It is fairly resistant going left. If I push hard enough, it'll flex. If I go to the right, it flexes pretty easy. So yeah, it is better than this other boot, but it is a long ways from being a, a true enduro boot. And again, if you push down, it just kind of squishes down really easy. That is not going to protect you if your bike lands on you. So we will give it a big X for crush protection. So it does not meet the, the level two enduro category. The last two, because sometimes boots will pick up attributes of different categories, even though they don't hit everything, are the hyperflexion of a boot. Now this is going to be debatable. If you're looking for a, uh, a touring boot or an adventure touring boot, a lot of times you're thinking, I have to walk. And as we look into the uh, enduro boots like this Tech 7, you'll notice that the, the front of the boot actually flexes quite a bit at the toe. It does not meet the motocross category, and that's because when we're on the trail, sometimes we have to get off the bike to push, or we might have to walk out. And this boot falls into that same sort of level and category where it, it's still about equivalent to where the enduro boots are, better than uh, some of the uh, touring boots. But you know, when you look at a motocross boot, there is absolutely no movement whatsoever. And as a comparison, this BMW is, actually better at its hyperflexion than both the Tech 7 and the Forma Terra Evo. So I, I, it, it's good, but it is definitely not at that protection level for hyperflexion. The last and the most difficult measure of protection for any off-road boot is going to be torsional rotation. And torsional rotation, just imagine you're riding, you plant your foot on the ground, and your body continues to rotate, and your foot does not. Right? That's called spiral fracture, where your, your foot actually rotates. To receive that level, first of all, if your boot is going to flex like this, chances of it meeting that are almost Zero. I, I don't know any boot that doesn't have crush protection that has torsional rotation. But looking at it, this is a three buckle boot. That's kind of a giveaway. Almost all boots that meet that torsional rotation category are going to have four buckles. One exception is the, uh, the Alpenstar Tech 10. It's a three buckle boot, but it's the outlier here, right? So generally four buckles is what you need to get that. This is a three buckle boot. Uh, it does not have enough places to clamp down tight to, to really tighten up on that. And even if you're wearing a four buckle boot, if that boot is not cinched down tight against your leg, it's not going to give you that protection. The other giveaway on this boot is because of this large opening here that allows you to get your bigger calves in here, also means that it's going to be harder to get this boot to clamp down. And part of it is it's got this plastic puck on the front. That's great if you're riding a GS or you hit your crash bars on something. But because of that, you're just not going to get this clamp down on your leg tight enough to, uh, to give you that torsional rotation. So it gets a big fat no on that category there.
In short, it's a beefy looking boot. It's well built. It does have this big plastic clamp that runs around the boot that makes it look more like a motocross or an enduro boot. But when you unclamp, uh, unclip it and you pull that back, you realize all it is is the strap that holds the boot or holds the strap around. And that this is just a, a, a very light plastic that runs around the back. It's got two pivots here or two screws that go in. They're not attached to anything. They're just screwed straight into the boot and they're sitting high on the high side of the ankle. So they really don't do anything. It looks, it looks good. It looks protective, but it's just that. It just looks that part. So it looks beefy. It is, I would say that it is likely one of the beefiest adventure touring boots that I've seen on the market. I like the boot. It's a, it's a nice boot to ride in. It's a nice boot to walk around in. I certainly wouldn't hesitate taking a trip with this boot. I've enjoyed using it. But if I'm looking for actual off-road protection in enduro or motocross. If I'm a new rider looking because your chances of, of paddle walking or putting your feet down are a lot higher than, than a highly skilled rider who's going to stay on the pegs with, with almost no exception. Uh, if you're one of those riders, then definitely I would, I would go to another boot for those days that you're going to be out on the trail and reserve this boot for when you're doing touring or camping or you're in a very low risk uh, environment. Of course, no boot is going to protect us from injury entirely. The whole goal is to reduce the likelihood of an injury and to hopefully, if there is an injury, to reduce the severity of that injury. And that's always the choice here. It's not a good boot or a bad boot. It's just, does it meet your need? It's well built. It's well fitted. It has some really nice features about it. Uh, and also, I want to thank um, Atomic Moto. So this boot was sent to me by Atomic Moto to use, to wear, and when I was finished with it, to send it back. There's no... Uh, the, no monetary exchange. I don't get to keep the boot. I send them back when I'm done. Uh, we did a podcast some time ago on boots in general, and I mentioned how difficult it was for people to get first-hand reviews on how the boots really feel besides those that are selling them. And he said he was willing to send boots out to me to try and then just to send back to him to make sure that we, we kept these clean. There's no obligation for me to say anything good or bad about any of them. It, it doesn't matter. So I really want to thank Brian at Atomic Moto for setting this up and then also for sending out the new CD X Power, which is the next boot I want to get my, my feet into and spend some time with and then do some kind of review on this. Guys, I've done a lot of videos on boots because I'm a huge advocate. I know the injuries that happen when people aren't wearing the proper stuff. And uh, so this is actually really one of my first boot reviews for just focusing on specific boots besides just oh, the overall category. If there's something I didn't talk about you wish I had covered, please leave it in the comments. I'll try to answer your questions there. Uh, if not, I'll put it on a list in the future to make sure I cover whatever features it is that you're looking at. As far as price goes, I'm not putting the price down because you can go online and prices are all over the place. I think price is not the primary determinant for getting a boot. It should be how much protection does it have versus what you need the boot to do and how well does it fit you as a rider. Uh, boots are one of the few items that we can buy as a motorcyclist that we can't really cheap out on. We can buy a relatively inexpensive helmet and get high protection. We can buy relatively inexpensive riding gear and get good protection. Unfortunately, with boots, you, you, most of the time you're going to get what you pay for. Thanks for watching the channel, guys. Thank you for all of you on Patreon for supporting the channel. You're the ones that keep this channel going and keep it alive. For all of you who are not Patreon supporters and you're just enjoying the content, thanks for watching the channel. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified for the next video. I'll see you next time.